and welcome to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. And we are considering two amendments to S-119, which is on uh, up for action on the calendar today when we uh, go to the floor. And uh, let's see, we have Representative Ann Donahue with us. And um, I don't know, um, Ann or Martin, if it, one of you wanna go first or welcome to have, I don't know what. I'm ready anytime, up to you. What order you wanna take it? Okay, all right, why don't you go? Go okay. ahead. Yeah. So um, I consider myself a reasonably bright person. Um, and most of you know, I think I, I am an attorney by training. But it took me probably three hours of email back and forth um, with legislative counsel uh, last night to, to figure out from the bill that it actually you know, doesn't do what I feared it was doing based on what seemed to be the plain meaning. So my amendment, I think, just really cleans up and communicates more accurately what your bill already intended. Um, because I think, um, well, I'll just go straight to the, um, the, the sentence and the line in question. Um, which is C6, under, it's under the use of deadly force. And, and C6 is the statement that says, uh, a law enforcement officer shall not use a prohibited restraint on a person for any reason. And before you go any further, are, are you looking at draft 5.1? And, and what page is that on in the draft? So I am, I am looking at, uh, I was working off the notice calendar uh, and so I have that page, but then I also wrote down the page on this morning's calendar. So uh, the notice calendar, this is on page 5487. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was looking at the bill. So, uh, but okay, what's, what section of the bill is it now? C, section C is the use of deadly force and this is C6. So yeah, but what section in the bill? There's uh, like seven sections in the bill. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's in section. Let me just see. Section, section one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Section one. So on it's it's on. Uh, it's on page 5700 of today's calendar. It's on page 5487 of yesterday's calendar. So um, wh when I read that um, in its location under the use of force um, section, you know, it seems to convey that if an officer is in a situation where they clearly meet the standards for the use of deadly force. And, you know, the situation we all hope we never see, but we're based on the imminent threat, of the death of another person, the officer would be appropriate in using service weapon, um, you know, sh shooting, um, doing any other thing that would be deadly force. And yet, if the deadly force that they used was uh, in the definition of a prohibited restraint, they're still guilty of a felony um, for using that, even though they met the criteria for the use of deadly force. Um, and as I said, when I uh, had lengthy exchanges last night with, with Bryn, you know, if you go through four different components of separate law and kind of assemble them and put them together, um, it protects against that but it's really tough to find and see that. And removing that statement uh, does not in any way remove the prohibition of using that as a restraint, but it, uh, it clarifies that uh, it's not intended to say that if you have met the standards for deadly force, um, that, you, that that might not end up being the one and only uh, way that a life can be saved. So, 
Um, that's the purpose and the, what the amendment does is it simply removes that statement. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate it. I see Martin's hand. Martin, before we turn to you, any other um, committee members, any questions? No. Okay, Martin, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I also kind of was in the loop somewhat last night uh, with uh, Representative Donahue. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with where, where I agree with this uh, amendment. I think that we really over the course of the last couple of weeks and trying to thread the needle, so to speak, between making sure that we're being very restrictive on the use of, I'll use shorthand, uh, chokeholds, but on the other, uh, allowing the fact that those might be the best um, defense that an officer could use in certain situations and wanting to make sure that, that those situations are covered that we kind of ended up with uh, something that kind of works, but was pretty contorted, frankly. Uh, and, and really the contortion came out because of that provision C6. Because there we were saying, you can't use this for any reason. And yet, if you go through these steps, which in themselves are, are fine, you can get there where, where you can use uh, justifiable homicide defense. Uh, so, so I definitely think that this this uh, takes away what I would call the one blemish that I thought that this otherwise very good bill has. And, and so I really do, do agree uh, that this is a good amendment. Thank you, Nader. Thank you. Um, so I think I was kind of confused and was just hoping for more clarity. I mean, I thought that if a chokehold was used at this point and it was, um, and it was justified because it rose to the level of deadly force, um, then the officer wouldn't be charged with a felony. D did I miss something? Yeah, I mean, even if, even if the person survives because justifiable homicide covers injury as well. Yeah, I, I, I believe that's accurate um, ultimately, but I think in order to understand that you have to go as, as the, yeah. Martin said, you have to go through a really contorted tracking through the law. Um, okay. Removing it doesn't doesn't change the restriction on chokeholds, but it helps clarify that, as you said, um, an officer would not be liable for using a chokehold if, in fact, they fully met the standard for the use of deadly force. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I mean, then this is something that I would agree with. You know, there were, after our last iteration of this bill, um, a lot of cops were asking me whether they can or can't use a chokehold in that unlikely scenario. Um, and, you know, I explained that it was a contorted process, but they still could in that event. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that making it clear in this circumstance would be helpful so that there aren't people who are there there aren't officers who are just unclear about what they can or can't do so i i, I would support this thank you uh just looking for other hands if i'm if i'm not seeing people's hands just just jump in please folks another minute or so okay no i'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, just okay, go ahead uh, yeah sorry no, it's okay. Thank you. Go ahead. What page is this on? Are you looking at today's calendar? Okay. Today's yeah. calendar, it's on page uh, 5,700. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I also, um, it should also be be posted if that's another, another way. I know it's people read their read their right. materials all, di all different ways. And um, so if, yeah. if the count today's calendar is refreshed, uh, if you refresh it, it is now on the calendar and the amendment itself is on page 5702. But that really won't tell anybody what the amendment does because it just says it deletes C6. So you've got to go back to the um, 5700 is where the language that's deleted where 6 uh, C appears. Uh, in today's calendar. 
So, so if I can just, I, I need to add a clarification. Uh, if anybody did look at the previous calendar that wasn't just recently refreshed, uh, and if anybody had happened to print it off like I did, uh, there, there were two, uh, there are two errors in the calendar which have now been corrected. Uh, not not significant errors, uh, but uh, but the uh, effective date was incorrect in the calendar. Uh, it said only section one, and now if you look in the calendar, it says section one and section two are are not uh, until July first. Uh, and the justifiable homicide provision uh, 23053. Uh, only included uh, compliance with 2368B2 when it was supposed to say B2, oh. 4, and 5. And, and that has all been corrected. But I just wanted to flag that in case anybody had been looking at the version before. But it has been corrected. The ca calendar now is correct. Thank you. Tom. Thank you. Um, I, I have no doubt that uh, uh, this makes the bill a, a little bit better. Um, but with that said, uh, um, in my opinion, this is probably the worst bill I've ever seen come through the, the House of Representatives in my 10 years. And, and I'm certainly not willing to go the route of making not a bad bill, again, in my eyes, a terrible bill better. Um, where it may garner a couple more votes. So I will be voting against this amendment. Okay, I understand. Anybody else? Ken. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Has, has Commissioner Sherling or anybody weighed in on this? Anybody, state police or anybody, law enforcement? On the amendment? Oh, I, on yeah. this amendment, no, it was late last night. It was, you know, it was an issue that um, the Northfield police chief had brought up um, from the first bill about this huge concern that the new law on making it a felony to use um, prohibited restraint uh, could place an officer in a situation where it was a, um, you know, life and death struggling with somebody um, where they would believe they weren't permitted to use it, even though uh, deadly force was permitted. So that was part of why it caught my eye because I knew it was a, a concern of our chief and this would uh, respond to that concern to make it clear that that's not the intent. But last night I didn't, uh, I did not reach out to anybody new. And if I could just uh, add to that, I mean, we've certainly heard about, uh, if not on this particular amendment on this issue, we've heard a lot from a number of people uh, regarding uh, the availability of a defense if a chokehold has to be used in a situation where there's a threat of death or imminent bodily harm. So, bodily harm. so I'm pretty comfortable that this uh, improves it. It may not go far enough for Commissioner Sherling, but but it's certainly a, an improvement uh, in in where we were before. <laughs> Maxine, you're muted. Great, thank you. Hey, thank you, and and uh, thank you, Anne, very much. So I'm not seeing any other hands. So I would entertain a motion to. Consider uh, this amendment. So, do you want me to say something before we do it? Um, or it doesn't really matter. Probably doesn't matter. Um, we'll go. To, we'll go to discussion. So. I just. Uh, I. I really want um, more. More people to weigh in this, especially um, public safety, and they haven't weighed in on it. And um, I think anybody that I have concerns. I understand where I. I believe I understand where Ann is coming from and I appreciate that, but I still have concerns with the officer's safety of what's trying to be accomplished here. And this last minute stuff, I'm going to vote no against this uh, only because uh, the bill I haven't been comfortable with uh, from the from the beginning, but um, I'm still open to 
working on stuff, but uh, right now I'm still a no. Thanks. Right, no. Thank you. Don't Ken. worry, Ken. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Will and um, I just want to let folks know that um, I just learned that Selena is doing the devotional. So, uh, so I'm I'm hoping that that we can all get to them. Will and then Selena. Well, I, well, I was going to say that you know I understand the you know the the concern to some degree that that uh, there's not a lot of feedback on this amendment. But again, this is something that isn't actually any longer in our committee. We voted it out. This is a bill that is that is you know coming before the floor. So if if it's it seems a little last minute, well, it's a floor amendment, and, and that's just sort of the nature of the beast. Um, you know, I, I voted in favor uh, of this bill when it was in our committee. Uh, I certainly looks to me as though this uh, um, amendment takes a bill that I feel very favorably about and, and makes it better. And I'm certainly ready to make a motion to uh, approve the amendment as presented. Okay, thank you. So I will take that as, as a motion. <laughs> uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Great, thank you. And Selena, I know your hand was up. We'll move to discussion. Yeah, I was just gonna make the same motion. So thanks to representative not. Okay, so discussion, anybody? Okay, so then, Nod, are you good to? Yep, I'm okay, good great. to go. Thank you. Yeah. Hold on one sec. Yeah. Uh, so, Christy, uh, are we gonna leave anything open or are we just going to um, just move along? Um, we, we can leave it open. A little okay. bit, yeah. So, Christy Colburn. Yes. Ghost Lamp. Ken. Oh, I'll be glad when we get back in there. No. Hashim. Thanks. Yes. Not. Yes. Rachelson. Yes. Seymour, he's not here, right? Okay. Uh, Tully? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Burdick? No. Grad? Yes. Okay. Okay. So as of now, I have a seven four but we will uh, leave it open, but that is, um, and you're looking, is my math incorrect? Yes, I think yeah. you have seven point seven two two. Yeah, seven two two, thank seven, you. Two. Yeah, I'm right, I'm looking at my, you're right. <laughs> okay, um, but certainly enough that it is, has been um, that treated friendly, but we will leave it open uh, for Coach uh, and Patrick. Um, Okay, great. Thank you very Thank you much. Again. Appreciate it. Okay. Who made the, uh, the motion and the second? Uh, Will, Will moved it and Selena seconded it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Martin. So the uh, other amendment, um, uh, first of all, just uh, preface this by saying that uh, we've been trying very hard to address the concerns that we've heard from the Senate Judiciary along the way, and, and this amendment is, uh, furthers that. Um, so <clears throat> I'll just run through what the amendments are. The first amendment is to really simplifies the totality of the circumstances in two ways. Uh, it, takes, uh, it takes out the or reasonably available, and if everybody recalls from uh, what Bryn was telling us, uh, that's implicit uh, any, in any event, uh, because all of the, all of this, all of these standards, as far as uh, use of force and deadly force, go through the perspective of a reasonable law enforcement officer. Uh, so that reasonableness component of it is is really already there. So we don't need it there. Uh, 
and it makes the Senate more comfortable it not being there. Uh, we also didn't need to have the uh, long list of, of uh, those various, uh, the medical conditions and such. The, the key is that we have that uh, and continue to have that in, uh, in B5, section B5, which really is what establishes the duty for law enforcement to consider uh, whether conduct is a result of these various factors. So that, that's that particular amendment. The second amendment similarly uh, uh, takes out the or reasonably should know from the section related to law enforcement's uh, obligation to uh, consider uh, whether somebody's conduct is a result of uh, some impairment uh, in taking in deciding what kind of level of force to use. Uh, that, that caused uh, some concern about the uncertainty of having that language there. I don't think that we lose really much. And, and, and recall uh, that uh, really working uh, with uh, Will DeWight, uh, the language that was in there, um, uh, she, she uh, was in favor of and, did, and it did not include the or reasonably should know language. That language was in fact inserted because of what we thought uh, the Senate wanted uh, when they initially looked at this language. And apparently we were wrong as far as what the, the Senate wanted with respect to that language. Um, in any event, this still goes through the perspective of a reasonable law enforcement officer. Uh, would, would a reasonable law enforcement officer have known uh, that the conduct was a result of these various impairments? So we really are not losing much by even taking that out, frankly. Uh, the next, uh, actually, excuse me, Barbara, do you, oh. I see Barbara's hand, so, oh, and then Selena. Should we let Selena go first? Because I know she's got to leave. Yeah, and I also wonder if we could, because I really would love, well, I guess we can watch your, your devotionals on YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I wish there was, I wish it's we really could. really important work. You should definitely. I know, but I wish we could be there to support you. And um, no <laughs> please keep doing what you're doing. It's much more important than my devotional. Um, go ahead. Um, so Martin, is it your, because I do think by sort of carving this out of the totality of the circumstances, I mean, I, I note that um, similar language remains in the use of force provisions, but the, the use of deadly force does point pretty explicitly back to the totality of the circumstances definition, which will no longer contain such explicit language on this. Are you are you saying that you feel that the um, the language um, that remains would sort of encompass these principles and is backed by case law in doing so? Uh, yes, on both of those, and and recall that the standards for use of force <clears throat> applies uh, also to use of deadly force. So the things that we're setting forth, you know, it's we are adding uh, additional restrictions on the use of deadly force, uh, but all the standards that are in use of force apply to that equally. So, so I don't think we lose anything with the deadly force issue, and I do think that this is consistent uh, with the case law that I've been that I've been reading. Yes. Okay, that that is really helpful for me. I went when I first sort of read your amendment. I had a moment of like panic. Um, and concerned that we might be weakening things, but um, as I look at the whole, I just want to say on record before I have to go, as I look at the whole of the bill and what your amendment does, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more um, comfortable with this language and my sort of initial quick read of it. So uh, I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And, and um, I think we averted a threat uh, from the other body wanting to take that entire provision out uh, by by agreeing to this one uh, change, which I yeah. and I think this is a very important provision to have in there. I I strongly agree and really appreciate appreciate your the threading the needle on this. Appreciate it a lot, Barbara. Um, thanks. So Martin, I think my line of questioning is very similar to Selena's, but you had said um, the whole bill is basically through the perspective of the reasonable law enforcement officer. Um, so I'm wondering, and I appreciate that the Senate um, was not pleased with certain parts, but aside, aside from 
that, which I'm not saying we should dismiss. I'm just trying to understand what's the other harm of it appearing or of any of the sections of the three that you mentioned taking out, um, staying in there. What's the harm of keeping it in? But aside from, I understand one of them might make a difference between the Senate supporting it or not. But in, in the cases of um, uh, reasonably available and the long list re uh, appearing, and then your third one was, or reasonably should have known. So the Senate bristled at one of those three, is that right? Uh, they bristled at the reasonably should know and the reasonably available. Okay. And they also bristled just generally at that provision of B5. Okay, so I, I they think, basically think bristled, okay. Yeah, That's... yeah, I think, I think, to some extent, I mean, the, having the reasonably should know in that uh, subsection five does add a little uncertainty or confusion. Uh, it, it, it's not as clear that this is really tied to the whole concept of the reasonable officer standard. I think it kind of is, but uh, I don't think we lose anything by taking it out of there uh, because we talk about uh, you know, it's it's through the reasonable, the, you know, the lens of a reasonable law enforcement officer to begin with. Uh, I'm trying to find that language. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's in paragraphs uh, B4. You know, okay. the, the use force was objectively reasonable shall be evaluated from the perspective of a reasonable officer in the same situation. So I, I really think that that captures it. And for some reason, it was causing confusion where it is in paragraph five. And I kind of understand that. It, it, it does, is it modifying anything that we have in subsection B4 or not? I would say probably not, but it doesn't hurt to take this out to, to have that additional clarity. Okay. And um, you feel, do you feel confident that uh, this doesn't take any teeth out of what we're trying to accomplish. No, I don't think it takes teeth out of what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that, that we're definitely adding teeth. Uh, although again, uh -oh. wisdom uh, teeth. Yeah. Well, right. No. And, and again, I, you know, and you're going to hear more a little bit later, uh, that, that, <laughs> I mean, I've really looked at the cases and this really clarifies where, the second circuit is going and where other circuits have already clearly landed uh, that, that law enforcement has to take this into account uh, in determining what force, if any, to use. Thank you. Um, so the, the next change uh, in uh, the- um, Tom's hand is up. Pardon? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll, wait for, I'll wait for Martin to finish. Okay, all right. So the next change is uh, adding uh, this ban on uh, the training uh, for prohibited restraints. Uh, I guess the bottom line on that is uh, it's really codifying what is already occurring, but it certainly uh, keeps us from changing in the future uh, that they you know, won't start uh, training prohibited restraints again. Uh, as as if, you recall, if you recall, actually back in, February when we looked at 808 and when we uh, more recently had Drew Bloom in, uh, uh, you know, we understand that they're not training for these kind of restraints to begin with. <clears throat> so it codifies that and makes it very clear. And, it, and it, I think it really, it makes very clear that we're serious about the restrictions that we're putting on using prohibited restraints. Between what we did in 219 which now also because of Ann Donahue's amendment, we, we do have a clear path for uh, the defense uh, for use of chokeholds in those situations that comply with the standards in this bill. Uh, con combined with this restriction on the training, I think it's, it makes very clear uh, where we are with uh, chokeholds. Finally, the uh, last uh, amendment is to change the effective date to January 1st. Uh, rather than J uh, July 1st of 2021. A couple points there. One is uh, the policy making process as we've learned is, is well on its way uh, through that executive order of the governor. 
uh, we felt that it was waiting for too long to have those standards really to be put into place, uh, you know, waiting almost a year. Uh, so that's, that's why that change is there. Yeah, also, Martin, um, my understanding in terms of the, um, the training ban, I believe that was a suggestion of the Council of State Governments. Yeah, when, thank you. Yes. When they, when they testified uh, last week to Senate Judiciary. Correct. That, that's correct. A number of states are actually approaching it in that manner, uh, putting in bans. My understanding, Connecticut, Massachusetts, there may be others. Great. Tom, did you want to ask your question now? Or... Uh, yeah, yes and no. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess I, I'm just wondering where this language came from, I guess. Um, I, I heard that it came from the Senate and I was just wondering if, if that's is indeed where it did come from. Which, and I'm which, just wondering, again, and I'm wondering if it did come from the Senate, did they bet it or vote on it? Um, I, I, which language is that, Tom? Uh, the, this amendment. Oh, you mean uh, as far as the reasonable available and, and such? The, 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 uh, I would put a big umbrella on it, the whole thing. So, yeah, I'm not... I, I don't know what the Senate uh, has done, but I'm looking at this, uh, except for having uh, heard from the Council of State Governments with respect to the ban. Uh, but as far as the other word, I consider the other bits wordsmithing that actually we've had lots of testimony on, for instance, that first change regarding totality of the circumstances. And we've been modifying that given the various testimony we've received. And I think that this change is consistent with the testimony that we have received uh, as far as the, the first and the second uh, amendments here. Uh, again, uh, we had testimony on the provision uh, B5 related to conduct resulting from impairments. Uh, and we had testimony on it without the reasonably should know language and with the reasonably should know language. So I think we've vetted that ourselves as well. Um, and, and it either, frankly, works, but I think that this makes it, you know, it, it, it takes away some uncertainty of having that language there instead of really relying on it in subsection B4, which makes it very clear we're talking about reasonable perspective of, of a reasonable law enforcement officer when we're looking at these various uh, issues. Uh, the last one, as far as the training ban, that language came from Bryn at my, at my suggestion. Uh, uh, given the concept of what I heard from uh, the Council of State Governments. Uh, and so, so that, again, I, I would be more concerned if I didn't already understand uh, from testimony that we have received uh, that they're not training these bands anyway. You know, this is not part of the training. So let's make it clear that that's not going to change going forward. Right. So, so did Bryn get that? Uh, uh... Uh, recommendation from uh, Dick Sears uh, committee as far as this language goes? I don't think so, no. Oh, because I have, I, I heard that that's where it came from, so. Well, I, su I suggested that, that you know, it's, they heard the testimony from the Council of State Governments and, and it was raised as a consideration, uh, certainly by the Senate. You know, we're trying to, as much as possible, address concerns that they have. And frankly, it, made a lot of sense. Um, yeah, they, they, they did recommend it to the uh, Senate Judiciary. So, um, all right, uh, it's just, it, it just goes with my overall feeling of this bill and uh, um, how we're gonna be putting police officers into dangerous situations. I mean, we had Chief Pete come in and he, uh, you know, during his career several times um, he, he was in, you know, a fight for his life and had to use these, these restraints and, and, and to basically tie these, tie the hands behind, behind their backs and, and, uh, and still, you know, and take tools away, but still expect people to, you know, uh, our police officers to still go into these situations to me is, is utterly ridiculous. Um, uh, uh. I don't know if it's going to happen here, like has happened other places, you know, with people quitting and resigning and, uh, you know, just getting fed up with uh, 
uh, with uh, uh, entities like us getting involved in, in things we really don't know a lot about other than listening to testimony. I mean, uh, I, I guess I would ask anybody, and I don't expect an answer, if you've ever seen a real street fight. And there's no rules in a real street fight. Uh, and that's what police are known uh, for getting into. They get into real street fights, but they have rules. And, and the, the other person doesn't have any rules. I mean, uh, you know, just picture a 160 pound uh, 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 police officer going against a 275 pound behemoth. And uh, it, it would be ugly not being able to use or, or even having to think twice before you use a, uh, you know, prohibited restraint, which is a ridiculous term anyway, but, um, and, but in, in that second that uh, uh, something could happen and, uh, and going forward, I certainly, I, I certainly hope uh, none of our uh, brave, you know, our, our brave uh, police officers gets hurt because, um, because of this uh, BS that we're passing, because uh, if I if I was a betting man, I would I would put money on it that because of what we're doing, somebody's going to get hurt, and, and unnecessarily. And, and then with that, I, I would uh, I, I don't know if any and I would like an answer on this from anyone is how many people have been killed in Vermont using one of these uh, prohibited restraints. So Nader, I see that your hand is up. I know that um, that Ken and Barbara too, but Nader, did you want to respond to this directly with your? Um, I mean, I, so one of my question, one of my questions, one of my issues with this, um, this bill did have to do with prohibited restraints and the event in which they become necessary because, you know, as Tom had described, I was, I have been in those situations, except I'm not even 160 pounds. Uh, but, you know, from the way I'm interpreting this bill, these restraints can still be used. And I really hope I'm not mistaken here uh, because that's the reason that I'm able to support this bill is that these can be used in life or death situations. And if, if a cop is tussling around and it's a life or death situation, that would become justifiable if you're needing to use it. Um, and that's, that's the way I'm interpreting it. And that's the reason that I'm able to support this bill. Um, and I, I just wanted to throw throw that out there, um, and I hope I'm not mistaken in my understanding of this bill. That's that's all. No, well, I th and I think, yeah, and I think yeah. that goes back to uh, Representative Donahue's uh, amendment, which did clarify. And I just kind of overlooked that language that said you can't use a prohibited restraint for any reason, and that did cause some confusion that we're saying elsewhere that yes, there's a crime for prohibited restraint that leads to death or serious bodily injury, but there's a clear defense to that, which presumably uh, the state's attorneys will be looking at these standards that we're putting forth here to see if that was justified. And, and that would look specifically, if we're talking about the deadly, deadly force issue, looking at those standards that we have for deadly force. Was a threat of death or serious bodily harm imminent? In these situations that Tom has just described and you've described, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that when you're in that street fight, uh, all bets are off and anything can be used that needs to be used, including the rock, including the, the chokehold, et cetera. Uh, and, and there is that defense uh, that is out there that is considered by state's attorneys if they're ever gonna charge these things, which, so, so I, I'm comfortable that we finally have arrived there. You know, the one issue at one point we had put that defense right in the prohibited restraint crime. Uh, but as Bryn told us, that really isn't the standard for how we, we draft uh, legislation. I mean, we have the murder statute, the assault statutes, all of those, and they don't have the, the defense specifically in those statutes. You know, you have your defense separately. And that's what we have here. And, and I think I will reiterate the fact that the uh, justifiable homicide statute that is on the books right now, that provision that law enforcement could point to uh, is likely unconstitutional given uh, Supreme Court precedent. We're replacing that with a standard that now can be uh, used to justify not just, not just the prohibitive restraint that might lead to death or serious bodily injury, but any kind of uh, 
death that occurs in, in a situation with the law enforcement officer. We're now making very clear that that is an available defense, so. All right, thank you, yeah. And Nader, thank you for, for clarifying that. Um, okay, so let me get to Ken, Barbara, and then, then Tom. Um, I'm going to tone this down a little bit from where I was, but um, we do have law enforcement not coming back to their jobs. Um, look at Burlington. I don't think this is as, as simple as what I'm going to use the term lawyer talk is because we're talking about law enforcement good cops, yes, there's bad people in those situations, but for the, for the majority of time, they're doing their job to protect others and God knows they have to protect themselves. So I'm, I'm, I'm still voting, I'm voting no against this amendment too, thanks. Thank you, uh, Barbara and then Tom. So, um, I will be supporting and was going to make a motion to find this amendment friendly, this um, amendment and this bill. It is not anti-police officer. It isn't tying their hands behind their backs. It's giving parameters to when we can use the type of force um, that may need to be used but not that frequently. And um, Tom, you asked about the, the statistics. The statistics are frightening. In the last decade, 17 Vermonters died um, as a result of being shot, tasered, or killed by police in Vermont. Yeah, I asked about the prohibited restraints. And, um, we need to be protecting um, our citizens. A lot of those citizens that are getting killed suffer from mental illness, are uh, represented disproportionately from minorities. This bill is not taking away people's um, rights to defend themselves. Think of all the people, I understand some people are leaving law enforcement. Think of all the people that are terrified to live or go out of the streets in our state because of law enforcement. It's, it's, it's not a joke, it's a tough issue. And this bill seems sensible to me. Um, so I just wanna is, remind, I just wanna remind folks, um, we are talking about, um, we're talking about the amendments right now. Yes, you're it's right, yes. Not, it's, it's hard not to talk about the underlying bill, but but we you know do wanna focus on, on the amendments. So, so I move to find this amendment friendly. I now feel like it isn't going to take away um, from the intent and it does make clear the concern that I think Ken and Tom had that people were gonna lose, and Nader, that people might not be able to use um, certain uh, positions and defenses. So um, I ask, to find this amendment friendly. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tom, so, <laughs> sorry. So, um, Tom, your hand is down now. I'm, I'm all set. Okay, all right, so, um, not. A... Thanks, I, I just have, I have an, another question um, and I'm not being facetious and it's not a rhetorical question, but um, th this is something that's really important to me is making sure that officers are safe if we're going to be passing this and i'd like to know in more detail um from uh from tom or ken if they if they want to answer but why specifically you believe that officers will be in danger um, if this passes and it's, it's something i'm genuinely curious about because it's something that concerns me and i just want to make sure that i haven't missed anything either sure i, I think i can touch on that 
Um, as far as my uh, belief of uh, prohibited restraints, I, and, I, and uh, uh, for clarification, when I was speaking earlier, I, I, I believe I did make mention that there is situations that, that police can use these prohibited restraints. I, I, I know that, uh, you know, and, and it's in this bill. But, you, you know, I, and I know that the, uh, uh, they haven't been trained uh, for a period of time on using these prohibited restraints. Um, you know, by the state of Vermont. Um, and I'm going to guess uh, when the state of Vermont um, uh, was, was training to do these things that they were probably doing a good job on how to properly uh, use these restraints. Because when Barbara was mentioning the, the 17 people that have died over the last decade, which is, which is a tragedy, um, not there wasn't any mention of any of those deaths through prohibited restraint. Uh, again, so uh, at, I don't remember when uh, the, uh, the training was stopped by the state. Um, again, I, I, would, I would reiterate that uh, I, I'm gonna guess that it was done right because we didn't have any of those deaths. And, and I do know that uh, police officers do go outside of the state and different and, and uh, you know, do different kind of training, whether it's at a gym and martial arts academy or, or things like that. And I would, and, and probably learning a variation of these restraints, uh, not exactly the way that, uh, I'm gonna guess not exactly the way that maybe the state of Vermont was teaching. And, and I certainly hope that uh, if they are training to use these restraints outside of uh, the academy that, uh, they're uh, being taught properly. And, and it's not just uh, uh, one issue th that I would hate to see happen as far as potentially a police officer uh, being injured is that uh, that one second that he's got to, th that they may have to think about what they can do or not do can make a lot of difference in the world. And, and for the uh, safety of uh, somebody who they're trying to take into custody, um, if, if, these pro, if the restraints that they're learning somewhere else aren't uh, uh, technically uh, the same as what the state of Vermont, again, was obviously doing a good job at, uh, then potentially uh, a, a person they're trying to take into custody could get hurt. Thank you. Uh, Ken? I think Tom just said it um, very well, uh, my thoughts. The only thing I'm gonna add is, is, is I, I understand what we're trying to do. I get all that. But I also know there's been, last time I knew, as of last week, I believe, there's 43 law enforcement officers that have been killed this year too. And I'm just trying to, trying to, to take as much thought as I can uh, in this whole situation for everybody. That's really all I'm trying to do. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Martin. And again, we do have um, a motion and a second. And so we are continuing our discussion here on the amendment, Martin. Just one, uh, one more comment. So fairly standard in the policies and uh, for Vermont uh, law enforcement, including South Burlington, which I know best, uh, it states uh, that uh, chokeholds, and I can't recall exactly how they define them, but essentially what we're talking about here is prohibited restraints. Chokeholds uh, cannot be used unless, uh, the, unless deadly force is justified. And I don't think that our, uh, this bill, particularly uh, through uh, Ann Donahue's amendment, uh, through what we did with the justifiable homicide, uh, statute. Uh, I think that that will continue to be appropriate policy that they that they have in in uh, current law enforcement policies. I just don't think it changes that. Um, so, Ma Madam Chair, yes. Can we just vote on this so we can get on? I I think people have pretty much got their mind made up so we can get on to uh, the other stuff that's waiting for us because I think it's going to be a long night. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. 
So the clerk shall commence to call the roll. Uh, the only person we're missing is coach right now. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Uh, oh, Seymour so got up. Yeah. Be yeah. Before we start, is, is uh, the last vote is still open for Patrick? The Donahue Absolute, amendment? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I was going to get there, but ab absolutely. Okay. Sorry for buttoning. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Christy, not leave that open. Colburn? Yes. Ghost Lamp? No. Nope. Hashim, yes. Uh, not? Yes. Rachelson? Yes. Yes, sorry. Seymour? No. Tully? Yes. Lalone? Yes. Burdett? No. Grad? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. So, um, uh, Patrick, do you want to give your vote on um, uh, Representative Donahue's amendment? Uh, I can do that. Okay, great. Seymour? No. <laughs> great. Okay, thank you. And then um, we'll hold this other one open um, for a bit for coach. And um, thank you, everybody. So, so quick question, uh, Nader, are you going to track down the vote uh, from Coach so you can have it official? And if you could let me know what um, it is, I can. I can do that. I can uh, text him and email him here in a moment. All right, thanks. And I'll try as well. Uh, okay, great. Then we can. Uh, uh, Ma Max, oh, sorry, Max, sorry. Sorry. yeah, yeah. Before we go, just. Um, I think you understand how passionate I am about my belief on this bill. I'm pretty sure you do. And I know it's not normally, uh, I know it's not the norm to speak against a bill on the floor and, and, and I haven't totally decided that I'm going to, um, but I, I just wanted to put it out there that it, it may happen. And uh, just so there's no surprises. Okay. Well, I, I do appreciate you, you telling me and, and the committee, and I, yeah. I do. I do. Okay. Understand. And, and like I said, normally I wouldn't, but um, I, I think everybody understands why this topic or subject is so near and dear to my heart. So. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank no, you. Thank you. Thank you for saying something. Okay. Anybody else before we adjourn and go off YouTube? No. Nope. All right. All right. Well, take care, everybody. It will be a long day. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm not going